So we are talking about a bunch more trig identities today. The first four, I want you just to copy down right now. We are going to accept these without proof. So sine and cosine of adding two angles or subtracting two angles. This is going to help us because up to now, we just have certain angles that we have memorized on our unit circles. We know in the first quadrant, 30, 45, and 60. We have not memorized sine, cosine, or tangent of 15 degrees or 75 degrees. But if we can come up with ways of taking 30, 45, 60, and the various other ones that we've memorized on our unit circle, if we can put those together, adding or subtracting to get these other angles, we can get a whole bunch more exact answers instead of having to rely on what the, the decimal that the calculator gives us, which is rounded. So if I wanted tangent of 15 degrees, I could do tangent of 45 minus 30 degrees and use the formulas that we will derive in a moment. For the sine formula, well, for all four of these, the order matters, not so much for the A plus Bs because we know addition is commutative, but A minus B is a different number than B minus A. So notice on all of these, we have a pair plus or minus another pair. Whatever was first in the parentheses over here on the left needs to be first in each of the terms on the right. So the A was first on all of these A plus Bs and A minus Bs, and I have A first in the sine A cosine B or cosine A cosine B, and same thing for the second term in each of those four. B was the last one over here in these A plus Bs. B is the last one of the first part and the last one of the second part over here on the right. Notice that both sine formulas are sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And a couple of years ago in the regular pre-calculus class, they made up um, just a couple of little cheers things to help students remember. So if it helps you, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, 3.14159, the nine and the sine rhyme, if that helps you, go for it. Um, and then for the cosine ones, they came up with cosine, cosine, sine, sine. I don't know if the yelling and whispering helps or not, but if it does, you use that to try to remember it. Do notice that the sine identities both start with sine. The cosine identities both start with cosine. The sine ones are sine, cosine, cosine, sine. If it is a plus, sine of A plus B, we have a plus over on the right. If it is a minus, sine A minus B, we have a minus on the right. Cosine switches it around. It's cosine, cosine first, then it's not sine, sine, cosine, cosine. It's cosine, cosine, then sine, sine. If this was plus A plus B over on the left, we need a minus in between those terms on the right. And if it was a minus on the left, we need the opposite of that. We need a plus over here on the right. You are expected to memorize these formulas just not be able to derive them. The two that we are going to derive now are going to be tangent A plus B and tangent A minus B. And we're going to use these four to derive that. So first one, tan A plus B, we start off copying it exactly as printed. And since I just told you that we're going to prove these using the sine and cosine identities, what should we do with tan to make it be something that we can prove? What should the next step be, Mia? Now, if tan is not something you can distribute. Those arguments are inviolable. The argument has to stay A plus B unless I'm using those sine and cosine identities. Ronald? Would you make it tan over cosine? Yes. Tangent is always sine over cosine as long as we keep the argument the same. And you must write it not sine over cosine of A plus B. That is meaningless like that. It must be sine of A plus B 
over cosine of that same argument so that all three of these arguments match exactly. Nope. That's what I'm saying. You are not allowed to have only a single argument. You've got to have the argument in the numerator and repeat it in the denominator. Now I'm going to use those identities that you just wrote down. We just wrote down that for sine, the identities are sine, cosine, cosine, sine. The order of the angles has to stay the same. A then B. A then B, since I had A plus B up in that top line. And when it is the sine identity, if it's sine of A plus B, we still have A plus in between them. And we just wrote down that the cosine identity starts with cosine, but it's cosine, cosine, sine, sine. And I had to get my arguments in there. They had to stay in the same order, A then B. A then B, but the cosine identity, if it's A plus B, needs a minus in between these terms. Now, I'm trying to get an identity for the tangent of A plus B. So I'd like to end up with, kind of like I did with sine and cosine, sine A plus B equals sine, and then some other stuff. Cosine A plus B equals cosine, some other stuff. I'd like for this one to start off with the tangent of A. So I look at that first term, sine A cosine B, and, you know, if I could divide that by cosine A, this sine A over cosine A would give me a tangent A, and I'd have something that's going to start with tangent A. And what's more, if I divided just that first term by cosine B, I could get rid of that cosine B, and I'd have a tangent A for that first term in the numerator. Everybody with me there? But if I want to do that, I need to do that to the whole numerator, and I better do it to the whole denominator so that I don't really change the problem. And now I'm going to see what in the world happens. Hopefully I get something that simplifies pretty nicely and ends up giving me a nice identity. So I need to say that that means I have my first sine A cosine B is going to get divided by cosine A cosine B plus, and then my second term in the numerator, cosine A sine B, also needs to be divided by cosine A cosine B. And then in the denominator, that first term, cosine A cosine B, needs to be divided by cosine A cosine B. Hey, that one's looking kind of nice. Everything's going to cancel. That's going to leave me a 1 right there. And then I've got a minus. And then I have that sine A sine B, and it also needs to be divided by cosine A cosine B. And then we're just going to take a look at where did that get us? Did that get us anything that's canceling out, that's getting into a nicer form? We already talked about the first term by design, the cosines were going to cancel, and sine A over cosine A was going to give us the tangent of A more room to write here. And then let's look at that next term. So plus, hey, my cosines cancel. And Keith, what do I have left? Uh, co sine over cosine? Or, sorry, tangent. So I've got plus the tangent of B. And then we already said this, fir this first term, everything cancels, just leaving us a 1. And then minus. Now, I can't combine a sine A and a cosine of B. They've got to have the same argument. So I can't combine my things in the numerator. That can't be a sine squared because one's an A and one's a B. But if I put my A's together and my B's together, Abby. And there's our identity for the tan of A plus B. It equals tan A plus tan B over 1 minus tan A times tan B. So there's our next formula for our formula list. And then we're going to try it with, as you see up here, tangent of A minus B. I'd probably get something kind of similar, would be my best guess. 
the sine and cosine ones for a plus b and a minus b were similar, had some different pluses and minuses and things like that running around. So my guess is we'll get something kind of similar to that as we try to do tan a minus b. So let's get started on that one and then we'll come back to this page when we have that last formula to show here in this last spot. So for the tangent of a minus b, since we're doing a proof, we have to start by copying that exactly as printed with no changes. And let's see, what you guys tell me on that last one? I rewrote tangent as what, Reed? Sine over cosine, but it's got to be sine of a minus b over cosine of a minus b. I have to have the argument in the numerator and again in the denominator when I do that. So let's use our formulas from that list of those first four that we started off with. So the sine identity is always, it starts with sine, and that's the one that is sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Keep the A's and the B's in the same order. And for the sine identities, if it was A minus B, I needed A minus between those sine, cosine terms. Denominator, let's use our cosine A minus B formula. And that one was cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Keep the angles in the same order. And for the cosine identity, if it was minus, we needed to have a plus in there. Okay, so let's use the same strategy that we just did. We'd sure like for tangent A minus B to be equal to something that starts off with the tangent of A. So let's see. Probably similar to what I did before. If I divide this sine A by a cosine A, I'll be able to start off with tangent A. And if I also divide by cosine B, then that first term will only be tangent A. But if I do that to the numerator, I need to do that to everything in the numerator and to everything in the denominator so that I'm just multiplying this whole expression by 1. And then let's write down where we are. So first term, sine A cosine B needs to be divided by cosine A cosine B. So the cosine Bs are going to cancel. And I'll just have my tan A there. Second term of the numerator. I did have cosine A sine B. Now I am dividing that by cosine A cosine B. And oh, cosine A's are going to cancel again. So that'll be kind of nice. Denominator, I did have cosine A cosine B. If I divide that by cosine A cosine B, once again, everything cancels. Numerator and denominator were exactly equal to each other. And when the numerator and denominator are the same, that's just equal to 1. Keep my plus sign. I did have sine A sine B as the last thing in the denominator. So if I divide that by cosine A cosine B, then I haven't changed the problem any. So let's see where we are. So Chloe, what do I have for this first term in the numerator now? So sine A over cosine A is just tan A minus, what do I have now, Sajimbi? So minus the tan B, we already said the first part of the denominator is 1, and then we've got a plus. I can't combine sine A and sine B, those arguments are different, but I can combine sine A cosine A, sine B cosine B. Emily B, what does that give me? So plus tan A tan B, and there we have our tangent identity. Tan A minus B is tan A minus tan B over 1 plus tan A tan B. And if we put that in our formula list, we can kind of look at these. And yes, they are very similar. They both have tan A and then tan B in the numerator. If it was tan A plus B, I still have a plus in the numerator. If it was tan A minus B, I still have a minus in the numerator. Both denominators are 1 and then tan A tan B but the sign switches for the denominator. So does that much kind of make sense? You will have homework problems that ask you to develop the identities for tan A plus B or tan A minus B. 
you are expected to know how to go through all of these steps that we just did there. Any questions up to that point? Holly. When you multiply by the work on the replace side, like, okay, it's like, uh -huh. you have to, like, up from there, I kind of just go straight to the next step. No, let's, let's write it out in there in the derivation because we're trying to make sure we're communicating as clearly as possible. What if somebody who had no clue about this was reading just your paper as their only explanation of what was going on? We want to show the steps so that people can easily follow it. All right, let's start using this. And my first couple of examples um, are not going to be just numbers. I'm still going to have that theta in there. I'm not just saying what is the um, sine of 15 degrees. I'm not going to be able to get all the way just to a number in this. But I do have the sine of one thing plus another. So let's see what happens. Let's see if we can simplify that somewhat. That is going to be the sine identity starts with sine. That's the one that was sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Keep the angles in the same order. So theta, then pi over 4. Theta, then pi over 4. And for sine, the plus or minus stayed the same. Now, we don't know what theta is, so we don't know what sine theta or cosine theta would be. But we do know cosine and sine of pi over 4. Blake, what are sine and cosine pi over 4? So this is the sine of theta times root 2 over 2 plus the cosine of theta times root 2 over 2. Since I have a common factor in there, I think I'll multiply that, I'll factor that out in front and have root 2 over 2 times sine theta plus cosine theta. And that is as much as I can simplify because I do not know what theta is. So far so good? Let's do another one kind of like that and then we will get into specific numbers for my last two examples. This one's going to be interesting because of some of the things I'll be able to talk about at the end. So cosine theta minus pi over 2. The cosine identity starts off with cosine, cosine, and then sine, sine. Keep the angles in the same order. Theta, then pi over 2. Theta, then pi over 2. And the cosine identities, we switched the plus or minus sign. So I need a plus in here. Again, I do not know what the cosine or sine of theta would be, but I do know the sine and cosine of pi over 2. So, Emily Ann, help me out. What is the cosine of pi over 2? And what about the sine of pi over 2, okay? So that means 0 times whatever that cosine is goes away, and this just gives me the sine of theta. This says cosine of theta minus pi over 2 is exactly the same as the sine of theta. Let's think about our graphs. If I graph sine theta, let's see, that starts center line increasing, right? And this would have been, since this is radians, 2 pi, pi, pi over 2. Um, this would be 1, this would be negative 1, and I could label a few things and extend it a little bit farther, but that's our basic graph that we know, right? What if I gave you that graph and said, write me a cosine function that matches that graph? If you did it as a plus cosine graph, you'd be looking at this point, right? Center line is still 0, amplitude is still 1. So you'd say y is 0 plus 1 cosine, but you would have a shift. What would have to go in your parentheses for this shift? Shift to the right would be theta minus pi over 2. That's the graph of sine theta. That is also the graph of cosine theta minus pi over 2, which two of the four equations that we've learned that we can write um, that mean the same thing. Okay, now let's do the stuff with the specific numbers here. 75 degrees, that's not a memorized spot on the unit circles, is it? So let's see if we can come up with some angles we can add to get 75 
or subtract to get 75. Give me some ideas. What would work? Some angles that you know that would give you 75. Like, okay, so one way we could do this would be the cosine of 45 degrees plus 30 degrees. We'll do it that way, but give me some other things that we could have done instead. Got another one? Read. So 135 minus 45, would that get us there? Uh, anything else? Probably, but let's go with this one that we've got. And when you can get ones in the first quadrant, that's good. Would 135 minus 45 work or not? Yeah, 135 minus 45 isn't quite going to get us there, is it? What could we have done instead? How about 120? 135 minus 60, that would have worked. What about 120 minus 45? What would that have given us? That would have given us 75. So we could have used those. So you get the idea. But even if we'd written those down the first time, 30 and 45, if you can get first quadrant ones, you don't have to worry about messing up the plus and minus signs. So they're probably the easiest. So cosine identity is cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Keep the angles in the same order, 45, 30. 45, 30. For the cosine identities, we switch the plus or minus sign. Now, what is cosine 45 degrees, everybody? What is cosine 30 degrees? What is sine 45 degrees? And sine of 30 degrees. So that looks like that gives me root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4. So I could write those separately or with one big denominator. And that gives me an exact number for the cosine of 75 degrees. If I punched root 6 minus root 2 over 4 in my calculator, I'd get a decimal, which I'd be rounding. If I punch cosine 75 degrees into my calculator, I'd get the same decimal, but I'd still have to be rounding it. So we'd get the same decimal approximations, but this is the one that is exact that has not been rounded. And one last one. What do you want to use for 15 degrees? What do you want to add or subtract to get 15 degrees? Abby. 45 minus 30, what else could we do? Sixty minus forty-five, and again we'd get the same thing. Let's go with this. The numbers are a little bit smaller. Now this is our new tan identity. So let's see. That went tan of the first one, tan of the second one, and we kept the same plus or minus sign in the numerator. And then the denominator was one, and then tan of the first angle times tan of the second angle. And we had to have the opposite plus or minus sign and the denominator. So what is tan of 45 degrees? Tan of 30 degrees. And then the denominator one plus, you just told me that tan 45 is one and tan 30 is root three over three. Okay, can't leave it like that. I've got fractions inside of fractions, and I've got square root in a denominator. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the complex fractions, multiply numerator and denominator by 3, will give me 3 minus root 3 over 3 plus root 3. And I've still got a square root in the denominator. What do I do to rationalize this denominator? I multiply by the conjugate, I take the denominator, and I change the plus or minus sign in the middle. And I multiply numerator and denominator by that. So let's FOIL the numerator, and we have 9 minus 3 root 3 minus another 3 root 3 gives minus 6 root 3. Minus root 3 times minus root 3 minus minus is plus. Root 3 root 3 is a regular 3. 
denominator, three times three is nine. And when I do the O and the I of FOIL, they cancel out. So last times last gives me plus times minus root three times root three, a regular three. So I am looking at 12 minus six root three over six. And I can simplify that as two minus one root three. So two minus root three for that final answer. And I would have gotten an equivalent answer if I had done 60 minus 45 degrees instead. So any questions on that? All right, remainder of class time will be yours to work on the first of those new sets. Um, and then remember that as we have this closure coming up, contact me through Google Classroom with any questions that you've got on this set or any of the future sets.